Okay, thanks for tuning in. Um, my name's Sev. Uh, thank you for um, visiting my YouTube channel, The Life of Sev. Um, today I'm carrying on um, uh, with my TikTok live streaming, and uh, it is the, what is it, 27th? Is it the 27th? Yeah, the 27th of November, and uh, um, I've got my live stream going. We've got about 31 people online. Shout outs to you guys. So the camera's here, TikTok's here. So yeah, switching back and forth with eye contact. Um, yeah, shout outs to everybody that's tuning in regularly every day. Um, we average about 30 to 50 people streaming in all at once, which is ridiculous. And then uh, all across the broadcast over an hour, we have about, uh, I don't know, um, 900 people over, over an hour, whether they stay for a second, 10 minutes or the entire episode. You guys are awesome. Um, and yeah, keep, keep uh, coming in, keep asking questions, and uh, I'm here to help. But, <coughs> excuse me, one thing that I want to talk about is um, this, this current question that's been on my mind for the last month, and it is, what problem are you currently grappling with? Now, for me, it's more a challenge. Um, I see every problem as a challenge and uh, as uh, something that I need to do, that I need to accomplish, that I need to figure out, that I need to conquer, um, that I need to learn from. And uh, I, I'm, on, I'm almost 29 years old and uh, those days of me asking my parents for the advice, for the guidance uh, kind of passed me. But I do seek you know, advice from friends and experience from others and reading books and and all that stuff so uh, here is what I'm dealing with right now I am almost three weeks away from potentially walking away from something that's amazing and that's called teaching um, so for me being a high school teacher I've almost completed my second year of teaching I love my job the kids are amazing my colleagues are great my school is fantastic but but, and I'm not disregarding everything I just said by saying the word but, but I love my photography. I have a passion for photography and videography and helping people. Now, as a school teacher, they, uh, I get to help people every day. I get to help young people, um, help them with their mathematics, with their life problems, with their life skills and, and beyond that. I've also been asked by the school to be their photographer and create videos for them too. So you think that I'm sorted, my life is set, I'm going to be, I'm, 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 I'm awesome, I'm, I'm, I'm fantastic. However, I want to be able to reach people at scale. I want to be able to help people at scale. And it doesn't mean it's going to happen straight away, but personally right now I feel like I can't do that if I am working at a school and and uh, dedicating my time uh, for 40 weeks of the year um, at a school at the same school for eight eight hours or so a day I want to be able to reach everybody or reach a, a bigger audience throughout uh, the uh, the world eventually that's the aim and through the medium of photography, now I get 12 weeks off a year. So, you know, 40 weeks on, 12 weeks off. You know, they're scattered around and uh, when, when the school kids are on holiday, I'm on, on holiday and I get to um, chase my passion of photography. So, I've uh, got my cameras here, Sony. Uh, <laughs> shout outs to everybody that's watching, by the way. Um, and also the camera that I'm using right now, which is also the same exact camera. Um, but yeah, so the problem that I'm facing right now is I'm feeling, I'm not feeling overwhelmed, but I'm feeling that I'm uh, doing half, half, half-heartedly everything. So I'm half-heartedly teaching, I'm half-heartedly uh, doing my photography slash um, building my business. And, you know, like I'm really trying to do both at the same time. However, it's really difficult because... Um, you know, one minute I'm here, and another minute I need to focus on school, and it's like I haven't been able to channel them both in. Now, at the start of the year, before I became really, really into um, photography, I was really, really into my school job. I was like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I want to be the next Eddie Wu. Um, 
I had so many like goals and aspirations. Now, I still have those same goals and aspirations. However, I don't feel that they're as important as the new goals that I've set for myself with photography. And those goals would be um, to be able to um, travel anywhere in the world um, and get paid to do it for photography or videography or creating content. Um, and also at the same time, inspiring people to do what they want to do. So the, the total, the long-term goal, I hope I'm not making sense here. The ultimate goal is for me to be able to um, help people at scale. Um, and I feel like there is a way to do it via being a school teacher, eventually. Uh, and I'm not in a rush either, but next year is gonna be a massive year where I see if I'm enjoying photography more than teaching. And if I do, then that will be my main, like, my main focus. And I'm gonna put um, the teaching on hold, on hiatus, if you will, um, in the back pocket indefinitely um, from 2021. Now, I'm still going to be doing relief teaching next year uh, at the same school, and I'm still going to be, you know, the same teacher that you, you've come to know. Um, but it'll be more shifted towards photography. Now, relief teaching, as you know, you get a relief job, you go to the, that, that day, you focus on those four or five lessons, and you're done. That's it. There's no extra marking, there's no extra following through. Um, I, I mean, apart from more like behavior management throughout the day, but that, that's another story. So with that, I'll be able to focus more on my business. With that, I might be able to focus more on my TikTok stuff. Now with the TikTok stuff as well, that's another question because that's come out of nowhere in the last month and I still don't know what to do with that, but I love streaming. Like I love the 30 odd people that come and watch me every day. Like shout outs to the OG, shout outs to the people that have been you know, watching me and, 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 and supporting me and giving me good, good feedback and enjoying and asking questions. It's awesome. I want to be able to amplify that. I want to be able to reach a thousand people live in the same room, asking me questions and, and, and giving them, providing them value. Um, and yeah, so the problem right now is me on the final stretch towards the end of the year, and then obviously next year, deciding whether or not I'm making the right decision. But I'm gonna give it a go. I'm taking the leap, I'm taking a risk, and then, hey, join me on the journey, and then you'll see uh, by the end of 2020 where I am, and if I'm successful in one way, or if I revert the other way, or... The coolest thing is, I've got choices, and I love it, and uh, I'm enjoying every step of the way. I'm, I'm enjoying this moment right now and uh, see what happens from there. So that's my first question and that's my rant. So uh, thanks for uh, watching that first one. Uh, moving on to the next bit. All right. Okay, so we are playing a uh, question, question game um, where I'm shouting out uh, a page number um, and numbers and uh, the lovely people on TikTok uh, that I'm streaming to, currently 76 people online, shout outs. Actually, let's have a look and uh, who's uh, who's here. Uh, guys, start commenting and, and uh, saying stuff. So these are all the people online. We've got uh, Cook the Chook, um, Cutie Wholesome, that's the person I'm shouting out. Um, Cutie Wholesome, good thanks. Cutie Wholesome was the one that did the uh, uh, look at them all. Hi YouTube, Yas Queens. <laughs> oh, good chanks, good chanks. Look at them all. All right, uh, we've got how many? We've got 76 people online. It would be sick. It'd be super awesome to get 100 tonight. Um, we are going a bit over time, so I'm already going past my. Uh, hourly limit limit. I do it every time because I just love it. But anyway, um, the question I um, asked or the question that was chosen um, was what is what is my most what is my hated most hated personality trait that someone can have? Um, there was a lot of good responses. There was sexism, uh, racism, arrogance. Um, What's some other ones? Um, yeah, there were so many good, uh, so many good responses. My 
worst hated personality trait is a little bit more kind of in depth. So, and I don't know if there's like a specific name for it. Please, please feel free to, um, oh, some people are responding already. So Cutie Wholesome says bossy. Creepy Facts says bragging. So does Gemma. Um, yeah, shout outs to you guys. Um, so my most hated thing is when, um, when someone tells you off just because they can. So people have this desire or they, they, they feel like they're, they, they have to um, tell you off at every, any single opportunity they can. So for example, if, you're, if, you're, if you have a license, if you can drive and you're um, at the front of a traffic light thing um, and it's been two seconds in the green light and you're just like daydreaming and it's only been two seconds so you start moving but they honk at you, you know what I mean? And it's just like, dude, chill out. Are you in a rush somewhere? I'm sorry. Um, or when like, let's say your parents put yourself up like in your shoes. Who has parents or who has had anyone, maybe even a teacher, maybe you have accidentally dropped your pen on the floor and the teacher says, pick that up right now. And it was just an accident. Um, and they, they have that like power. Um, or who has parents who, um, Maybe you accidentally spilled like milk on the table or you, you accidentally dropped and broke something, it was an accident, and they just come down on you like hard um, just because they can. You ever feel that? Like, it's like, chill out, man. Like, it was an accident. Or when um, maybe you're out and about and there's like um, someone out and about, you don't even know, like a stranger, like another adult, like an, an adult or something. Um, most of the people that are watching are kids, so I'm trying to relate it to them the most, but an adult that you may have accidentally bumped into them at the shops, and then they just turn around and straight away say, watch where you're going, oh my God. Like, has that ever happened to you? So maybe a hypocrite? Yeah, kind of. A hypocrite is, is someone that um, says something, but then does the opposite. It's not kind of a hypocrite, but like, you imagine that, like, like if you um, accidentally, I don't know, um, another example is if, if you're on your phone, right? Like out in public, um, that's another story. But like, and then a, a, like an ad adult or a, a grown up or a, an older person, okay boomer, says, says, oh my God, he's on his phone. Like, dude, mind your own business. Like, why are you, why are you like mentioning that, that I'm on my phone? Like, Live your own life, mind your own business, you know? Like, oh, I'm on my phone, cool, man. I've got stuff to do on my phone. Or, oh, I didn't see you there, I bumped into you, I'm sorry. And then, like, the older person or whoever it is, they're, they're high and mighty all of a sudden, like they're God's gift, they say, excuse you? It's like, hey, we bumped into each other, you know? In a perfect scenario, you bump into each other no matter what age it is, and unless you are actually actually at fault it was just an accident you both say oh my bad oh that's okay you know have a good day and move on that's my biggest pet hate is when people just decide to come down on you like like a house of bricks just because they can so um the peachy boy the peachy boy one of my uh probably probably streamed into me early really early when i first started streaming on tiktok which wasn't too long ago Probably about three weeks ago now. So um, shout outs to Peachy Boy for this question. And I get it all the time because as a school teacher, I have to deal with it almost every day. How do you deal with bullies? Now, um, as I've mentioned in the live stream already, um, it is super cliche and it's super overused, but the, the biggest advice is to just ignore the bullies, okay? So um, just to um, reiterate what I said to the, to the peeps tuning in, um, by ignoring the bullies, you stop fueling the fire. I mean, if anyone has ever been around a bonfire or a, fire, a campfire, right? Um, you have to keep adding more wood or leaves or paper or whatever to fuel the fire, right? If you stop fueling the fire, does the fire go out straight away? No, it doesn't, right? But you give it some time and it will eventually burn out, right? So that's the fire analogy. Does that make sense? And if you do that with bullies by ignoring them, 
So, bye Felicia. Um, eventually, their fire, which is bullying you, um, will go out. Their, their fire will go out because nothing's fueling them. They're just like, well, this guy's boring. He's just ignoring us. They'll be like, oh, are you ignoring me? Oh, why are you ignoring me for? You know, because they want, they want that. You know, that's the first telltale sign that it's working because they'll be like that. And be like, why are you ignoring me? And then eventually they'll leave you alone. Just don't react, right? Um, there's some other ways to go about it by, by uh, I don't know, acting a little bit weird, but um, that's really only works for specific um, times where you you're, you're weird them out and then they're like, oh, I don't want anything to do with this weirdo. But if it's name calling, if it's physical abuse, if you're reacting to it, I mean, if it's physical abuse, you should tell somebody about it first and foremost, but you know. Now, um, to give you the story about um, the year eight me, when I was 13, 13, um, when I was in year eight, first year of high school back then, um, I had a girl in my class, a girl, right, a girl. And what she did was she hated me. She really hated me because um, my mum was a teacher at the school. So I was a prime target for bullying. Now, mum was a teacher at the school and this girl was um, had my mum as a teacher and she hated my mum. Like, she was like, man, your mum is like, a lot of bad names. Anyway, um, and I, I didn't have a problem with this girl personally. But I did stand up for my mum, obviously. She's my mum. I love her. And, uh, and then I was like, I, I don't remember exactly what I said, but I was just standing up with, for, for my mum. And what happened was she, this girl got really angry and she threw a chair at me. Like literally picked up a chair from the classroom and threw it at me. Now I managed to step away, um, but you know, that sort of stuff. <laughs> That sort of stuff in year eight is kind of scary when, especially a girl, you know, like, um, not trying to be sexist or anything, but you wouldn't really expect a girl to pick up a chair and physically throw it at you. Um, but yeah, so, um, and that, and that's what happened there. Now, how I dealt with that, I kept to myself. I ignored her. I didn't like interact with her. Um, even if she started to tell me about um, how my mum does this and this. And the biggest one in year eight, and this was this is the same girl, she kept teasing me, bullying me, that my mum made her own clothes. Like, oh, your mum's so poor, she makes her own clothes, right? And yeah, I was like, she makes her own clothes, so what? I don't care, like, cool. Now, guess what happens? Guess what happens, right? So later on, the same girl, as she um, went, as she grew up, she grew older, and um, she started to get into a little bit of fashion. She started to buy things, you know, they were trendy. And then she got into a subject at school called textiles. Now, what do you do in textiles? You learn how to sew. You learn how to make things. You learn how to make bags. You learn how to make pillows. Who's done all that? Who's, who's done textiles before and, le and learned sewing machines? Um, right. And then she started to progress into clothes design. She became obsessed with it and she got into fashion design. And all of a sudden, she's in year 12 and she decided to... Um, um, that she wanted to be a fashion designer. And guess what a fashion designer is? Someone that makes their own clothes or someone that designs clothes for people to wear, for them to wear. And guess who had all the knowledge and all the power and all of the resources and experience? My mum. My mum had all the knowledge and power. All of a sudden, my mum was her best friend. Like she was obsessed with my mum. She was like, I love your mum. I can't believe she makes, um, like she's such a good fashion design teacher because she's, she taught textiles at school. And that's what happened. And I remember this day for the rest of my life. In year 12, when I was in year 12, she, this girl came up to me and said, hey, um, is your mum busy at the moment? Um, like I'd really like to speak to her about textiles. Now, I forgive, but I don't forget. However, I don't push it upon them either. I, I could have easily gone, 
remember that chair you threw at me back in year eight? Stuff you. I don't want to. I don't want to hear from you again. Um, I let that go. I didn't remind her. I didn't speak up about it or anything. I didn't need to. You know, um, deep down inside, I know how I had won. So, um, and yeah, they. She got in touch with my mum, and then she helped her out. And I don't know where she is now, but that was it. That was the story. So your worst enemy or your worst bully, young age, one day they may come back and they'll need something, right? But it's up to you to decide whether, what you want to do with that. I chose the higher ground and felt good about me helping them or her in this situation. And that's, um, that's really it. That's the story. And, um, but yeah, putting yourself in those shoes, putting yourself in that scenario those bullies, those meanies, those bad people or bad kids who tease you and bully you, one day they may come crawling back because they need something from you. And hey, you don't have to give them anything. You can just be like, I'm sorry, who are you? You know? Um, but it is the best feeling in the world um, that I was able to, you know, remember that story and, but instantly, because I'm a good person and I'm just like, Hey, I'll help you out here, you know? So yeah, hope you enjoyed that story. Thanks for the question. We have gone live and these are all the people that are uh, commenting right now. Fantastic human beings. How many people we got live? We got 50 people live and uh, all these people haven't saying hi. Look at them all, look at them all saying hi. I really appreciate it. Hey guys. Hey iTunes. Hey. Look at them all, look at them all. Tazzy Dog 1311. We're playing the numbers game from the book. 1311 um, was the number that was called out first. And the question reads um, Was it 1311? No, 1355. My, my apologies. 1355. Doing a good job, aren't I? Um, so the question reads, and this is a good one for you guys. Um, do you ever compare your life to anyone else's? If so, who? Do you compare your life to anyone else's? If so, who? Now, cheers guys for if you're answering um, in the questions. Um, I'm going to answer now. I used to compare my life to people. I used to compare my life to friends family, celebrities, like sports stars and things like that. I use it for more like inspiration and motivation. But there were times when I would use it for um, where I would get upset because when I every time I compared with those people, I would be second best and I always wanted to, you know, be be on the same level. And uh, more recently, I was comparing myself to other photographers and I was like, man, there's so, such good photographers. I wish I could be like that. And then eventually I started to learn and, and develop my craft and my skill. And then I managed to get better at, at a specific level that I felt was on par. But then I found other photographers, other artists that were again like, way up there and I'm just like man such goals I'm so far behind still oh my god and then I realized I've got my own style everybody's got their own different style everybody's got, got their own different story to tell like and there's people out there that probably compare themselves to me and think that they're second best but in reality you guys have um, you guys have your own life to live and you shouldn't really compare yourself to anybody else. You can be inspired by them, but it's it's your life, it's your run, it's your race to run. So um, you can um, get people to help you, but if you are constantly always comparing your life with someone else's, then you're trying to, to, to live your life like them. And if you're doing that, then you're not really living your best life. You can have specific aspects of your of their life in yours that you may want. For example, you may want fancy clothes or a fancy car or maybe you want to be a good video game player. But in reality, you've got to just work hard and, and, and find your, your own personal passion. And if it's the same as somebody else's, 
it's still a different pathway to theirs. So that's that's my two cents. Little Bandit, Little Bandit 225 has asked me, if you could go back to any year, which year would you go back to? And I'm, I'm gonna say why as well. So I would go back and I wouldn't really change a thing. First and foremost, I wouldn't change a thing because I believe in the butterfly effect and everything happens for a reason and the things that have happened to me have blessed me to where I am today and I'm super stoked to where I am today. My goodness. But um, the year that I would go back to would definitely be year 11 because that was when I had the most fun with um, my friends. Um, we didn't realize it but years later we wouldn't really be communicating with each other we've got our own lives we've, we've gone so many separate ways and out of everybody I only still talk to one person from school um, he's a close friend of mine still we catch up every now and then uh, but back then we didn't realize that and uh, I would really love to have gone back to year 11 and um, we set up lands which is like we brought our xboxes and our playstations and our computers to each other's houses set them all up so we can network together and play um it was call of duty 4 like modern war the original modern warfare like the yeah online we would play online bad internet connection and then we'd play locally then we'd get sick of it and then we'd play guitar hero um then we'd play some other game a like halo and and we'd go on the PC and play Age of Empires. Like, that was dope. And then Minecraft started coming out, I think. And then, um, what else did we play? We played so many different games and it was crazy. But we didn't know back then or how good it was. How good it actually was. We would stay up until 4 o'clock in the morning playing. And, and this was on, like, school holidays and weekends. And it was our, like, escape. That was our awesome time. Um, it was such simple times back then and I would love to go back there and just relive that, do it all again, um, but do it all the same as well. Um, but just like sink it all in a little bit more. So year 11 for sure. And in terms of academics, I mean again, the way that I went about it, I wouldn't change it, but I would probably um, pull my head in a little bit more and uh, try a little bit harder. But then again, um, I'll never know the alternative of what would have happened if I had tried harder. I have a university degree, I have a full-time permanent job at a school, and I'm pretty, doing pretty well for myself, so, you know, it's perspective. Thanks for the question, little bandit, love it. Shout outs to uh, all the amazing uh, students um, and kids that are watching this who are about to uh, finish school and also um, get into high school next year. A lot of you are, shout outs. Um, some of you are, have, have just finished your first year of high school and are going to year eight next year. Some of you are going into year nine and so on. My universal advice to every one of you is to keep your notebooks from this current year because the middle school, so year seven, eight and nine, it's kind of like a like a stepping stone to the next level, um, but you're still learning similar things, especially in maths. So um, make sure you're paying attention and you're taking as many notes as you can. Something you don't understand, take notes about it. Even if you don't understand it at that moment, take notes on it because later on you may read and be like, oh, I get that now. Or if a a teacher asks you something like a question or a, an example you'll be able to look at your notes and be like oh yeah that so there's a good way to do it if you already take notes fantastic um, year seven eight and nine I mean year seven is a little bit different because it's your first year of high school and my advice to that is just be a good person but my advice to everyone and anyone even adults grown-ups uh, whoever's listening be a good person to everyone anyway um, don't get into gossip, don't get into drama, don't talk down to anyone, don't talk about anyone about their, behind their back. Um, even if it's tempting, even if someone's talking to you about it, you don't know the person and what's going on in themselves. Even if they're being mean, you know, um, just avoid the drama. You know, one day it can be completely changed. You do not know that person. But year eight and nine, the middle school students, 
I would say just just keep keep on going. Just keep on going, take notes, pay attention, and keep on going. When you get into year 10, it becomes a little bit more interesting, but a little bit more tailor-made. Again, it depends on what school you go to, private, public, um, new school, old school, whatever. Um, but yeah, just make sure you're a good person and you take notes. And if you don't understand something and your teacher's still struggling to get it through to you, go on YouTube and look up because you may find 10, 20 different videos explaining the same thing in 10 or 20 different ways. And if you're taking notes through those, um, through those videos, something will click eventually. And you'll be like, oh, okay. That makes sense now, all of a sudden. And um, that's how it goes. Like, who's, who's had a, a favorite teacher they've had in maths or in English, and then they understood everything that they were saying. And then one day, um, they get a different teacher and it's completely different. They just don't understand them before. Who's had that happen before? Um, science, maybe, as well. Um, me, I've had different maths teachers and I've just been like, I don't get this at all. And then all of a sudden, a different maths teacher comes along and explains it to me in a specific way. And I'm like, whoa, that makes so much sense. So be patient. Don't get frustrated. See if you can learn yourself. Maybe ask your parents if you're really struggling to get a tutor. Um, uh, if, you, if you get a tutor, like I used to tutor as well, kids outside of school, and they would get it much better because it's one-on-one. -on -one. And again, school isn't for everybody, but you have to put up with it up until year 10. And if you're absolutely certain that you really, really, really want to leave a school um, during year 10 and get a trade or something like that, then that's what you want to go for because school isn't made for everybody but you have to be absolutely sure you can't just do it if you hate the teachers or if you're not putting in the effort okay you have to be honest with yourself so that's my advice to you guys for school hope that helps